A while ago, I made a video on a team build setup that had the goal to, with ease, maximize your damage resist. And we were pressing near immune levels of damage resistance, reaching all the way up to 96% DR. I bring this up now because I give you a build that reaches almost the same level of damage resist, but no longer needing the second player with you. And the key to it all is Gifted Conviction. Gifted Conviction is an exotic chess piece that at first glance granted you nothing more than just three little arc bombs that literally do nothing for damage. But to give credit where credit's due, they did jolt targets that were caught in their blast radius. I almost completely wrote it off until I read that it grants the user damage resistance. After a little research, I've learned that at four stacks, you gain a 50% damage reduction just off of jolting enemies, literally from any source too. You don't even need to be on the arc subclass or prismatic subclass, just a volt shot weapon will do. Range, of course, being the only variable at this point. But with all the stacking we will be doing today, you alone can walk around with a 86.22% damage reduction just by doing one thing. That being, jolting enemies as much as you can. Now getting into the build, of course this will be on the arc subclass. Reason being is that a lot of synergies, such as class ability regeneration and just being amplified overall, is more heavily favored over on the arc subclass than it will be over on prismatic. And that on prismatic, any fragments that made their way over there are inherently just more watered down than the ones you will just get straight on the uh, arc subclass. As well as on the arc subclass, I wanted as much uptime on the damage resistance as I possibly could have. And though you technically can get more damage resistance over on the prismatic subclass, that does require transcendence. And transcendence is almost a borderline super needing that you need to build it up rather than it just being readily available at any given moment. So with those reasons, hopefully you can understand why I went the route that I did. For the super, I went gathering storm. Fortunately, this part does not matter. So run whatever super you want to run. Next up, it will be gambler's dodge paired with with combination blow melee for the infinite loop cycle that you can get here but we will be going into that a little shortly on why this part doesn't really matter that much either up next i have my grenade which is just a pulse grenade just love it that much it honestly still doesn't matter what you run for your grenade now for the aspects we have ascension and flow state now at the beginning of this video i made it clear that you don't even need to have ascension on in order to get the damage resist from the exotic the only thing gifted conviction does for the ascension aspect is the three little arc bombs that come out of it during the ability. And with this idea, I really tried to make lethal current work for it jolts and thus gives you a damage resistance with it. And the idea to run combination blow without a damage boosting exotic isn't necessarily out of the normal, saying that Assassin's Cow was the meta for the fattest minute there. I didn't see Gifted Conviction being an upgrade from that build. You don't need damage resist if the enemies just aren't shooting you to begin with type stuff. So what I did is I leaned a little bit away from punching so much and more into just jolting everything as as much as possible. And Ascension does that extremely well, with anything being caught in its radius being jolted, as well as making you amplified, which is where flow state comes in. Flow state, as stated here, says while you are amplified, your dodge recharges more quickly. And that's the only reason we're using this aspect. Now this recharge rate is a constant uptime of 200%. For Ascension, gives you 15 seconds on Amplified. But even with me getting my mobility as low as I possibly can being tier 3 mobility, you only need 11 seconds to get your class ability back. And this only gets faster the higher the tier of mobility you have, for pretty decent spam. And for the fragments, only one of these is actually needed for the build with the idea that we're going with. And that is just Spark Resistance for that flat 25% in DR, just by being around 3 or more enemies. But just to go over all the fragments that I have here, we have Spark of ions. For every jolted enemy defeated, I spawn an ionic trace that refills 12.5% of all of my abilities, with the downside of a 10 second cooldown, of course. Spark of shock to make all my grenades jolt targets on contact to further refresh my damage resistance, or just to keep the room as clear as possible, because chain lightning is just that guy. For the idea that the arc subclass does not have any source of healing outside of the combination blow melee, and though we are rocking an 86% DR, for the time that the fight drags on a little too long, we will be receiving a 400% increase ability regeneration for our grenade and melee. But let's be honest, it's really just for our grenade. Gambler's dodge goes hard. Now that we have fully hashed out the subclass, it's time to go over the mods. And with the mods in mind, there is an artifact mod that I actually want to point your attention to as well. It states as follows, while you have an arc or prismatic subclass equipped, incoming damage from combatants is reduced while you are amplified, which just piggybacks right off of ascension again, for it also just makes you amplified upon you. 
use. Galvanic Armor is a 30% damage reduction, so it ties into the entire pot of just damage reduction. Now, before we get into the armor mods, I do want to state one thing about Ascension, and that's the not really out of the ordinary fact that Ascension does not count as a class ability. Therefore, Dynamo won't work, Bomber won't work, and if you either want to spawn or pick up orbs with Reaper or Powerful Attraction, those won't work either. So it really does kind of kill some synergy that we have going on with our mods in general, but there's still something that we can do with them. But now that I've given you enough time to just copy and paste this, if you wanted to pause the video, it's time to actually get into the mods. On the head, of course, we have an orb maker for our weapons. You will most likely be wanting to run a volt shot weapon for jolting enemies, just makes you damage resistant as, as long as they're within a certain range of meters with you. So with that idea, you'll just be making orbs off of that as well. And with these orb spawns, it will tie into a couple other mods that we have later on. But for the remainder of the helmet, it's just heavy finders and scouts, simply because nothing else here is really worth your time. Over on the arms, we do have a firepower for I will be using my grenade, and we do actually get our grenade relatively quickly, whether we're in critical and we get the 400% increase to our grenade energy, or we just get ionic traces off of killing massive amounts of adds and spawning them. And then with the grenade coming back, we will be getting that defeat into our class ability energy with a bolstering detonation mod. Fastball is just here because I had the open slot and it was free. Over on the chest piece, it's just your standard resistance mods. Yes, run them. It is a part of the build. Or if you run one mod, it's 15%. If you ran two mods, that's 25%. So this is where the percentage total at the very end of everything kind of gets shifted. But this part does count towards your overall damage resistance. So do what you want here, read the room well, understand the damage that's coming after you. Over on the legs piece, we do have a better already and recuperation mainly because arc, other than combination blows melee of course, has no source of healing. If I could find a way to make ionic traces heal me, that would be amazing. Unfortunately, that's just not a thing. But with us collecting a lot of ionic traces, we do have elemental charge. For each time we collect an ionic trace, our chances will get higher and higher of gaining an armor charge, which does come over to the class piece. Now, I only have special finisher on because I never take it off. That part, that's just me. Now, the other part is utility kickstart. I'm going with it just because it keeps the uptime on the class ability spam, though you don't need it. The class ability will come back on its own. It's just a matter of when, meaning within 11 to nine seconds of each other. Bomber doesn't work. Outreach doesn't work. We've already hashed this out. Powerful attraction doesn't work. Reaper doesn't work. You could go with any of these finisher mods if you wanted your grenade back explosive finisher would give it to you back but i'm just going with utility kickstart because why not ascension is actually better than you would think on the offensive as well it hits hard on the attack plus it gives you the damage resistance now i'm going to enter a segment here to make it clear for those that just want to see what it is that makes the damage resistance so getting into it gifted conviction at four stacks is a 50 percent damage reduction spark of resistance at a 25 percent dr Galvanic Armor is a 30% DR. Two Resists Mods is a 25% DR. I'm leaving room for the secondary element. And Tier 10 Resilience is a 30% DR. And by using this formula here, the total DR we will be receiving is a whopping 86.22%. Now, if you made it this far in the video, I just want to say thank you so much. It helps the video and me out a ton. If you have found anything in this video informative, do hit that like button for me. And if you are interested in more builds like this, hit the subscribe button for me. I appreciate you all for it. Now take care and peace.